Hey, what's going on? This is Wilfox125, and I'm going to be talking about Kuan's theme. I'm going to get into the, like, the nitty gritty, break this thing completely apart, talk about the theory behind the chord choices, the progression, the key changes, all of that music nerd stuff. I'm going to show you why everything works so well, and I'm going to show other examples of um, compositional techniques that Rado tends to favor when it comes to writing well, a villain theme and just you're gonna learn a lot of stuff along the way so without further ado this is uh, this is my interpretation of what's going on in the song so you hear like this intro there's gonna be uh, this progression that happens the entire time this is in the key of um, uh, F sharp minor and um, I'm going to talk about the chords in terms of the scale degree. I like doing that because when you know the chords based on their scale degree, knowing the names is important too, but the scale degree will tell you what function it does. Um, and when you go to a different key, those functions will be identical. They'll just, you know, be like tinted a different uh, way, but functionally speaking, like, it's going to be consistent, but I will say the key names, uh, the court names as it comes up. So talk about this intro. There's something cool that happens in this intro when it comes to the progression. So just playing the root. So one chord, six. Four, two, five, and which is going to go to the one. So, uh, diatonically speaking, um, in other words, relative to the key that I'm in, I'll show you what the chords of those scale degrees are. So your one chord in um, F sharp minor, six, D major, four, B minor, two, G sharp, diminish, five, C sharp, seven, or major. Uh, that's kind of like harmonic minor. Oh, <laughs> that's very common for your five, even though you'd expect your five chord to be like minor sometimes you just make it like that if that's considered a secondary dominant i'm not 100 percent sure but we'll just say that it is but layer like i guess like day one like harmony or uh, functional chords whenever you have like a five chord it resolves so well to your one chord and to extend that your two chord extends to the five to the one jazz two five one that's going to come up later it's a very clean way of just getting back to the beginning of the progression it's also a really clean way to establish a new key later on in the song you're going to see that but i'll get to that when i get to that so those aren't the chords. Those are technically the chords. Like the root of the chords are going to be the same. Oh, the one, six, four, two, five. That's going to be the same, but there's going to be alterations to the chord voicing and the chord quality that is is going to be different. Um, I believe layer zero of like chord choices is basically just choosing the chords that are diatonic to that key layer one of chord choices is using a different quality of that chord what i mean by quality a quality of a chord is kind of like is the chord major minor diminish augmented etc and the extensions extend from that so like uh dominant seven is kind of like major but you know flat seven etc but those are basically it so what we can do instead of just using the original chords is 
just change the quality of them. So, um, I'll play the intro. So that's a nine chord. So that's not a change that I'm talking about. It's more of an extension. So like instead of just minor, I like the seven and I have the nine. So that's like D major nine, nine right there. And then basically minor seven on the four but right here. What's happening there? Uh, we're playing the seven chord on the two, which is very peculiar. And we're playing like this. You can look at this in a couple of different ways. You can look at it as like a 13th chord because you'll have like C sharp and you'll have like this A towards like the bottom of the voicing. I look at it as like, well, I'm kind of playing like A augmented plus B. I, it's, it's basically just a seventh chord. So that's not like really an alteration either, but this two chord. I noticed that Rado likes to use a dominant on the two for a villain theme. So in Hilda's theme, you have C being the one, D7 as the two, and then you have like five back to one, and the song goes on from there. I noticed that he likes to do that. The two chord has like that quality. Like when you like, when you use like the major third in there, there's just something mischievous about it. I'll do it in this context. Um, There's just something about this note that leads up into that five that's like so cool. It's also kind of like, kind of like bluesy in a way, but kind of more like a, a merge between like classical and blues. It, I don't know. It's really, 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 really freaking cool. So this progression is very important to like remember because it's going to be in, I'd say like 50% of the song. So I'll play that. So another little vamp of like the progression and then the melody's gonna come in with like I guess you use like a piano plus a choir type of thing which sound like really like, dramatic. So cool, so cool, so uh so freaking dramatic. Um When I look at a melody, I someone once told me that melody is a melody describes the chords. And it, so when I think about it, I think about what the melody is kind of like emphasizing. And you're gonna notice some of the changes be um, slipped into the melody itself. So. Right here. That phrase is so cool. If I don't play like any of the chords, you could still, that's enough information to tell me that something happened to this two chord. Cause we have like the C natural, this um, major third in here. And then this completing like the five chord right there. That is so, it's so elegant, you see. It's so, it's really cool, it's really cool. I'm gonna be gushing a lot in this uh, video. But pretty simple. Here's this other part that's very like, uh, like this. I like to break this one up into two halves. Uh, so the first half of this is, it's a lot of power chords going on. Guitar, even like organ, um, loves power chords. Power chord being, you're not gonna have too many color tones in that chord. You're not gonna have any 
thirds or uh, sevens or anything like that. You're just going to have one and five. It's just something visceral about it where it's not too much about like being all too pretty. It's just, uh, let's go. <laughs> so the way that I um, voice this is the melody is basically just going up the blue scale, like kind of really emphasizing that tritone, that blue note. And every note that I play, I'm going to be playing a perfect fourth under it. Or if you think about like a chord, like you're just going to have like the five, you know, and like eight or, but screw all this other stuff. We're just going to have that. That's going to be carried throughout the entire thing. The bass is going to be doing just the, the root, like the same note as like the melody. I like to play octaves just to make it a little bit thicker. I mean, that just the scale. Just that scale, just blue scale, pretty self-explanatory. Um, but there's a second half that happens. So that happens for half a bit. Here's the second half right here. I love how that guitar squeals, it's so expressive. Uh, um, so I would play like and then it goes to the next part. Um, same idea, like power chords everywhere. So you go down and then you go up to this A. I love doing this, like little expression is you just like. It, this is a weird, uh, just, you, it's just something you gotta feel. You hold down the sustain pedal, uh, underneath. You just shake it. You just go like, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> and meanwhile, while the melody is playing this, notice that I'm just pedaling the root of the, the key, just F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, just the whole thing. Quarter notes. Uh, <laughs> The next section is pretty cool. I'm like blazing through this because a lot of like the cool stuff is going to be towards the end of this song. So right here, I love this part. This progression is very common too. Uh, let me let me show you what it is as it plays. So you have six, five. One, sharp six, diminish, four, five, one, one. Key change happens. We'll talk about that in a sec. That's going to be a whole can of worms. But, uh, how do I, how do I, I'll just play it at the melody with the chords. Um. Um, the way that I personally do this is I just remember like the progression and I just find like a, a rhythmic way for my left hand to like keep some of that interest there. What I like to do, or rather what I like to avoid doing is playing like thick chords like this. Like I try not to play like the third down here in this register. I try to just be like the five, but then I try to sneak the third in kind of like in this register. So like finish it like that and so usually it's just one five one so uh the progression being d c sharp d sharp uh d sharp diminished so i call this the sharp six diminished 
Uh, the reason being is that it's basically, it was kind of like an altered chord. It's, it's kind of like, maybe, I, maybe I'll call it layer two, but maybe it's just, maybe it's just like a, <laughs> on the side of layer one, because it, it just changes one note of the chord that you would expect. What you would expect is just your, um, six chord D major, but we're just going to like use sharp right there. So D sharp diminish. So a different quality, but a different root too. Um, technically, I, I would say like the quality doesn't really change. Like what I mean by that, that, uh, sorry, this doesn't make any sense, but, um, since I'm using a different chord as a substitution to a chord that I would expect, I only change the root. Anything above that root, I leave it alone. So with D, you could have like, well, you'll have like F sharp and uh, G, uh, C sharp maybe, so like D major seven. Let me go back to this view, right? But if you do this, everything above it stays the same. So I guess technically if you have like other extensions, I don't know, you could experiment that if you want, but um, That's kind of annoying for me to do, <laughs> but <laughs> this progression is so common for radio and just in music in general, but especially like Undernight and Melting Blood soundtrack for, I'll just call this section the course of the song where you'll have some variation of four five one but right here sharp six diminish so if you look at like this is a little different but six seven five sharp six diminish if you look at um Lene, that g sharp you know that Functionally, this is why, again, this is why I say like the numbers are like really, really, really important because functionally it does the same thing, even though it's in a different key. We have 12 keys. It's a lot easier for at least me to be like, oh, this song does all of this because, well, this is what it does functionally. So when you change keys, it'll be a little bit easier. And that's, <laughs> it brings me to what's going to happen next. The next thing that happens is that we have a key change. So you're going to feel like this difference in like that palette, you know, right here. That's so cool. Back to original key. But what happens here and what key, what notes do I remember to use for this key change? Well, there's a way to organize key changes or rather all the keys and I'm going to bring up you, you probably guessed it the circle of pips baby so <laughs> so when you think about the key center right let's see I think I have like a double mouse on here look at the bigger mouse it's a little weird um but so right here we're in this key right like we had three sharps a f sharp minor you know and we go to this key and if you notice this is three so this movement means that we flattened three times right so in other words so just keep in your mind on um, the key of a major and the key of c major and i'll show you what i mean so like uh key of a major slash F sharp minor. They are lots of major minor together, meaning that they share the same pool of notes. But you'll have three sharps. Oh, sorry. One other thing I, I should mention, because maybe if you're not familiar with the circle, what's going on here, um, real quick, all you really need to know is that, okay, so we have like 12 keys on the in music in, in, as a whole, right? And these are organized in a way where 
you'll introduce a certain number of sharps and flats depending on which direction you go. So in C, we have zero. We have zero. There's no black keys, right? And when you go to G, you have one, which is F sharp. And when you go to D, you have two, which is F sharp and D sharp. Another note that I that was never explained to me as a musician <laughs> was that when you have a certain number of sharps, the previous sharps are consistent. So when you go to A, you're going to have F sharp, D sharp, and now G sharp. And then when you go to E, those three are the same. Plus, you're going to have D sharp. I <laughs> This is just something that was like overlooked when I, I didn't go to school for music, but that is just something that no one ever told me. <laughs> so like seeing this organized in this way, it like opened up like so much. I'm like, oh, so what that tells me is that I can substitute all of these names for numbers. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of going a little too deep, but in other words, uh, think of sharps as positive numbers and flats as negative numbers. So this means you could do math. If everything's a number, you could do math. So if you go down three degrees that's like subtracting three so when you're in a you have these three sharps when you're in c you have no sharps plus three minus three equals zero this movement is common all over the place and that means that there's always going to be this relationship with all these other um uh keys <laughs> I hope that made sense. I'll put it another way. There's a specific feeling that going up a minor third, aka going up three flats, so like there's something specific about that 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 allows me to know what pool of uh, of chords and notes that I'm going to be using instantly as soon as I recognize that specific feeling this feeling i don't know how to describe this feeling let me listen to it like maybe you can help me with this but feel this there's just something extended about it just like just something epic i don't know what the best word is for it but um i'll just tell you what the chords are <laughs> while we're here so remember we're in f sharp but now we're going to go I did 251 of C. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned 251 is such a great way of just establishing the beginning of a, a chord progression, but it's also a great way to establish a new key at any moment, at any moment. So D minor, G7, C. The song also goes to F major. It's it's literally again two five one right. Um, I said we went D and then G and then C. You see how and then F. You see how it's all organized. This is why this circle is so freaking useful. So I have this more or less memorized in my head where everything is. It's so useful for any time you go to another key. While we're on the subject, um. This is a technique that's used in a lot of uh, songs and specifically a lot of Rado's uh, compositions. So notice how this song goes. <laughs> um, um, You notice that so like the key center with that song hilda's theme it's, it's the same theme but it extends itself by just playing the same theme but just in a different position it's all relative so it goes up from c minor right and then it goes to e flat minor and then it goes to f sharp minor 
and again you're going to see that consistent here so uh what did i say i said um uh i said c minor right and then if you go counterclockwise one two three e flat minor one two three f sharp minor you see how it has that same feel it's very very logical it's so freaking cool. <laughs> I can keep talking about that, but I uh, I just love it. <laughs> so let me talk back about this song. Like I, I told you the interesting things are gonna be at the end. So mm -hmm. two out. That's so cool. So this part of the song, we're gonna two five one in from the perspective of, of C, right? Oh. This note, I noticed that this song does this run at this position. Where you would expect to use E natural, but it uses uh, E flat. Right here. That's so cool. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I don't, I, I just they don't know. I'll, I'll like learn. Because <laughs> when I first like was playing to it I kind of was like wait there's something else going on so I just love like figuring out what you expect to hear and then you play back and you're like wait something else happened why that's basically my entire uh approach but this leads us back into the original key which is really cool so we play the four chord right of uh C uh excuse me the four chord of F sharp minor our original key B, B minor. Right? The three chord. Oops. Do that again. This is another interesting chord. I'll talk about it in a sec. The song goes on from there. Uh... This part of the progression, when we get back to original key. G. G natural major. We'd expect to use um, a G sharp, but earlier I mentioned, remember when I mentioned that you use like um, the sharp, the sharp six, but everything else you leave it alone? It's the same idea here where you use the flat two right this is your two you flatten it so instead of g sharp g natural but everything else is left alone it plays like this sharp 11 um thing so you're gonna have like this kind of have like this tritone relationship i like to play like a inverted a on top but at the end of the day this is the melody note so i'm aiming for that so back to the two chord, and instead of playing like um, the D right here, we're just gonna play E. So what does that make? I think that makes like a 13 or minor 13, I don't know. Either way, I'm just gonna be playing like E right here. So again, remember like um, two, five, one, so that sets it up back to the beginning of the song, which is really cool. One other thing I'll mention is that this, <laughs> I just love playing like a diminished on top of this. So the way I look at this seven chord, the C sharp, um, seven flat nine, I just think about uh, C sharp and then they're just making a diminish from the third. So from F. I love that voice leading to how like you have like this and then you have that like a... that's so cool 
One other thing I'll mention real quick is that feel free to explore this. Um, all seventh chords derive from diminished chords. This is why this diminished just sounds so good on top of it. It just sounds so good because it derives from it. So the way that you can get any seventh chord is by taking a diminished and then lower a note. All of a sudden you have a seventh chord. Put it back, lower this note. Now you have like E7. Same thing with G and so on. Any diminished chord, you can do that. And that also tells me that there's a relationship between all of them together as if they're brothers and sisters. That uh, that tells me that you can use the same diminished over any of those seventh chords. So for whatever reason, I have this chord. That would work. That would work. <laughs> Um, that would still work. It's the same diminished chord because they all stem from the same origin. <laughs> okay, I could ramble about uh, music theory forever. So to close out the video, I'm going to play the song. I have not practiced this song recently. Um, I will add the video of me playing the song properly in my um in the description of this video but i'm going to play it from start to finish so here we go Okay, that's my interpretation of the song. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Uh, and I'm here to ramble about more music stuff and to gush more about theory and all that stuff. So if there's any other topic I did, feel free to comment that as well. And feel free to watch the video of me playing it um, more, you know, a more polished version of it, but that wasn't too bad. And I also plan on uh, making sheet music and a synthesia for this song too. So thank you very much. This has been Wolfox Piano, Wolfox125. We'll catch y'all later.